Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Rebecca Sauser. Um, I am a biology major here at Oglethorpe. And for my bio seminar presentation, I will be talking about um, early life anxiety and um, the relationship it has with alcohol abuse in adolescence. Um, so the reason why I chose this topic is because my family has a long history with um, alcohol abuse, um, also starting in adolescence. Um, and another reason is because um, this semester in my sociology class, we've been learning about anxiety, um, what happens to our body when we experience anxiety. And even though we were looking at it in terms of um, um, racial discrimination, um, it was really interesting to see anxiety in another platform or environment. Um, but yeah. Okay, so for my outline, so I wanna start with explaining why um, teenage alcohol abuse is a really big problem in society today. I wanna to talk about anxiety, uh, what happens to our body when we experience anxiety, um, and the possible negative effects that our body um, can experience if we um, experience anxiety for too long. Um, and then I want to um, introduce my experimental study. I want to explain why the researchers in, in this paper um, decided to use a non-human primate model. Um, I'm going to be going over their methods, results, and conclusion. And then um, at the end, or I'm going to end with a take home message. OK, so why is teenage control um, abuse a big problem in society today? So um, studies have shown that um, drinking at an early age increases um, your likelihood of developing future alcohol use disorders. Um, which are known as AUDs. Um, also in 2017, um, 7.4 million teenagers reported consuming alcohol in the past month. And 60% of um, these teenagers uh, reported um, drinking um, in the form of bench drinking. Um, and then we also know that um, drinking at an, at an early age um, leads to negative um, health outcomes, um, especially on, on the brain, um, which can lead to um, memory loss, um, poor performance at school, and also um, social problems. Um, and lastly, um, this problem also accounts for, sorry, um, for more than 3,900 deaths among people under the age of 21 um, each year. Um, so based on um, these um, statistics, we can pretty much say that it's a really big problem. It's not only affecting teenagers, but um, other people as well, um, especially when teenagers um, are, start driving. Um, and this could also um, lead to violence because um, it impairs um, their, um, their brain function. Um, so it could essentially have or lead to um, other problems and um, affect um, not only teenagers, but um, people around them. Okay, so now I wanna talk about anxiety and um, what happens to our body when we experience anxiety. Um, so anxiety could be defined as an intense or excessive reaction um, about everyday situations. And you see this um, or these um, situations can be like um, taking a test um, at school or um, speaking um, in front of a crowd. Um, so when we experience anxiety, um, our brain signals the adrenal glands to release cortisol, uh, which is also known as the stress hormone. Um, so when it gets released, our bloodstream gets flooded with um, glucose, um, which then um, turns into um, an increase 
in blood pressure and um, in an acceleration of our um, heart rate. Um, so it essentially puts our body on alert. And I know that you might be thinking right now, like, doesn't everyone experience um, stress at some point in their lives? And yes, um, it's actually totally normal to experience stress. Um, this is why we have this pathway and this is why our body reacts this way when, he, when we experience anxiety. However, a normal stress response um, turns on and then turns off. Um, and if this pathway or this system does not um, turn off, um, it leads to an overproduction of cortisol um, on our body. Um, and, the, and having too much cortisol on our body um, increases um, our risks of um, getting diabetes and suffering from heart problems. Um, so yeah. Okay, so moving on to my experimental study. Um, so the experimental study that I chose for this topic um, is titled Early Life Temperamental Anxiety is Associated with Excessive Alcohol Intake in Adolescents, a Reese's Monkey Model. Um, and they hypo um, their hypothesis was um, infant monkeys that exhibit high levels of anxiety-like behaviors and high cortisol concentrations during the early months of life will engage in high, high I'm sorry, high alcohol intake as adolescents. Um, so they basically um, used um, Reese's monkeys um, to, um, to see if early life anxiety could be associated with um, alcohol abuse um, during adolescence. Um, so now I wanna explain why they used um, rhesus monkeys. Um, so they used rhesus monkeys because um, their anatomy and their physiology is very similar to humans. Um, they also show um, important personality traits and um, temperamental traits that are very similar to humans. Um, a lot of people also use them for other studies because um, they age three to four times faster than humans. Um, and this allows us to see the developmental outcomes in a faster way. Um, also like humans, um, they, um, they live in large, um, social groups, um, and this um, allows us to see the effect of social variables on alcohol consumption, as well as the um, effect of, on or of early um, life experiences. Okay, so now moving on to um, methods and tests. Um, so for their experiment, um, they used a total of 64 monkeys. Um, 24 were, were males and 34, 35 were females. Um, so from birth until they were um, five months of age, they were um, kept with their mothers and other monkeys. Um, and during this time, um, the researchers um, conducted a five minute um, or five minute observations um, twice, um, twice a week. Um, and they, um, they basically looked at their behaviors, um, and, um, they used, they also used a scoring system, um, to, um, code their behaviors, um, and I actually have a picture of what the coding, um, system looked like, um, so this is what they used to score their behavior, um, and, um, this includes behaviors that, are traditionally used to assess anxiety in rhesus monkeys. Um, so um, yeah, this is basically what they used um, for five months. Um, they would observe, observe them and um, give them a specific score based on, um, based on what they saw. Um, and also uh, at four months um, to see, um, their cortisol levels under blood, they um, obtained um, cortisol, cortisol samples from each subject. 
Um, so after waiting for, they waited for two, two and a half years. Um, they were still with, they were still um, um, interacting with their mothers um, and interacting with other monkeys at this time. Um, but once they were adolescents, um, so at this time they were about three to four years of age, they were um, separated from their mothers um, and their peers, and they were put into um, other um, enclosures. And this is where they were um, allowed access to a Kool-Aid solution that contained alcohol. And um, to um, collect um, drinking data, um, they, um, they had uh, the monkeys or the subjects had colors um, with a sensor, which then a computer um, then detected and recorded um, the, the number of drinking bouts per session. Um, and they did this for um, seven consecutive weeks. Okay, now moving on to results. Um, so for figure one, um, this graph is looking at the association between um, infant mutual ventral contact with mother, with their mother and mean adolescent alcohol intake. Um, so um, the graph is showing a positive um, linear regression. And this is basically telling us that um, that infants that spend more time in mutual ventral contact with their mothers um, showed greater alcohol consumption during adolescence. Um, figure two, um, the one on the right, um, shows the association between infant social contact with peers and mean adolescent alcohol intake. Um, and on this one, we see a negative um, linear regression. Um, and based on the results, um, it's basically telling, telling us that um, infants that spend more time um, in social contact with their peers um, showed um, lower alcohol intake during adolescence. For figure three, um, the picture on the left, um, is looking at the association between infant um, environmental exploration and mean adolescent alcohol intake. Um, we see a negative, once again, we see a negative linear regression. And this is, this graph is essentially saying that um, infants that spend more time exploring their environment showed significantly lower alcohol consumption um, during adolescence. Um, figure four is looking at the association between infant anxiety factor scores in mean adolescent alcohol intake. Um, on this one, we see a positive linear regression. Um, and it's indicating that subjects with prior infant anxiety scores consume more alcohol as adolescents. Um, and then for the last two sets of results, um, the graph on the left shows the relationship between association between infant cortisol and mean adolescent alcohol intake. Um, this is showing, graph is showing a positive linear regression. And this graph, in this graph we can see that um, infants with higher levels of cortisol exhibited um, significantly higher um, alcohol intake during adolescence. And then for the last one, um, figure six, um, this one is looking at the association between adolescent cortisol and mean adolescent alcohol intake. Um, we see a positive linear regression once again. And the graph shows that, um, where it's telling us that um, adolescents with higher levels of cortisol prior to um, drinking initiation also showed 
um, higher levels of alcohol intake. Um, so for my conclusion or for their conclusion, um, so essentially the study was able to support their hypothesis that anxiety during infancy um, is a foundational risk um, for increased alcohol consumption during adolescence. Um, the study showed that infants that spend more time plunging um, to their mother avoided interaction with their peers, um, barely explore their environment, and um, monkeys that ha had um, higher cortisol levels in infancy um, essentially um, consumed more alcohol um, during adolescence. Um, Okay, and lastly, for my take home message. Um, so something valuable to take away from this um, presentation is to keep in mind that um, the relationship between um, infant anxiety and adolescence alcohol ins consumption is, a found is foundational and not decisive because there will always be um, other factors that might come into play. Um, so it's, it's, it's important to keep that in mind, that it's foundational and not decisive. Um, however, um, identifying individuals at risk for excessive alcohol intake um, in adolescence is a step toward, towards developing effective um, preventative measures and um, intervention programs. Um, and essentially with this knowledge, um, we can um, better help individuals at risk for developing AUDs um, by assessing their physiological and behavioral um, propensity for anxiety early in life. And lastly, um, um, this is my only reference, um, which is from the paper that I used. Um, so thank you. Thank you so much for listening.